So in today's video, this is a, a tool that I've used for, for many years, at least 10, give or take a couple of years. And um, it's, it's one of those things that I can't live without, and that would be this guy right here, which is the Power Probe, Power Probe 3 uh, Circuit Tester. Uh, this particular tool, like I said, it's it's quick and dirty as far as diagnosing electrical problems, which is which is real nice. And um, I featured this thing a few times um, in the past, probably just on TikTok. It was back before I was doing YouTube um, the shorts. And uh, well, a couple of common uh, complaints or uh, comments I got about this would be that uh, these things are just uh, glorified test lights, which is couldn't be anything further from the truth and uh no, to be fair too i mean tick tock the average iq there is that of room temperature celsius or fahrenheit it doesn't matter it's just the amount of drool and uh one, one of the other comments would be is that these things fry computers now I, I was a little concerned about that so what i did was i put this in the same box as a computer for a week and the computer still worked uh, so I'm thinking it might have more to do with people putting 12 volts on a computer where 12 volts don't belong, and that probably has something to do with the uh, the old uh, frying computer uh, complaint there. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I think what we'll do is I'll go over the basic features of this thing, how I use it on a day-to-day, -day, and um, what comes in the package that I particularly bought, um, a couple accessories I picked up with it, and I got a little, little mock... Uh, diagnostic thing we could do and kind of walk you through how I would diagnose diagnose a problem with this particular tool. I dropped it. But uh, yeah, so let's flip the camera around and we'll get into that. Alright, now, the particular kit that I bought, there, there's different tiers as far as kits go. Uh, this is like, would be like the second tier up. They do sell a starter kit, which is the cheapest one, and then they go all the way up to like a pro kit, which is, has the test lead, a meter, uh, the test probe, back probe, all kinds of different stuff. But um, yeah, I kind of got the second step up. Uh, basically, what you get with this one is, of course, the the old power probe here. Uh, this is removable and replaceable if need be. Uh, you got your alligator clips that go on to said battery. That, uh, from the circuit that you're testing, which plug into here, which also allows you to plug in other things, which is inside this box here. And this gives you a cigarette lighter adapter. So if you're, say, probing underneath of a dash, inside the interior of the vehicle, testing windows, blower fans, what have you, uh, this lets you plug into the cigarette lighter. And then you just plug this instead of having to hook up the old alligator clips there and then you get a extension I'm not sure oh they give you an extra wire didn't even know that they give an extension which I believe gives you another 20 feet of wire um, as you can see it's got the factory wire tie on it because I've never needed to use that much that much wire the power probe itself comes with uh, 20 feet of cable give or take a little bit as far as I can tell which is plenty for what I'm using. I think if any of you truck guys are out there working on lights for trailers, you'd probably want to do this, you know, so you could plug into the batteries at the tractor and go all the way to the back of the truck where, where the tail lights are. Now, getting into the actual tool itself, um, I don't know if I mentioned, but this is 12 to 24 volts, so it should be said, but um, I'm going to plug this into my bench top power supply. Because I didn't feel like humping a battery over here to uh, do this little demonstration here. But uh, you will notice my power supply is a little noisy. If I ground myself, it's even worse. <laughs> it doesn't do that on a regular battery. But um, yeah, so like we mentioned earlier, you got the tip here, which is replaceable and lets you put accessories on. Um, if you take the power probe with the rocker switch and you push forward, red light and a high tone indicates um, 12 volt power here, which you'd be injecting 12 volts into the system. Uh, down, green light, low tone indicates ground. Uh, we're going to turn that speaker off for now because it's just noisy and we don't need to be doing that constantly. 
And then you got on the side here, um, you got a circuit breaker, which is a 8 amp slow blow circuit breaker. Uh, 8 amps, it runs all day. And as, like, say if you have like a 15 amp load, like a starter solenoid that you're trying to jump out a starter with, uh, this will uh, run it for, I, I, there's a chart, but I think it's like 20 seconds. So it won't do it all day, but eventually it'll pop and then, and then you got to reset the circuit breaker. And I almost forgot to mention um, a, a critical thing here, and that would be this. And this is always ground. This is just a substitute ground. You click that on, you get the green LED lit up, indicating that the probe is touching ground. Now, as far as accessories go, or at least the ones I've bought, um, you can take this tip off. You got two... This particular kit I got has two back probe pins, and that is good for if you want to test um, the circuit, test in circuit, I should say. And you just simply take this guy, and you would slip it up in between the insulation and the wire there. Kind of walk it down until you touch metal, and that way there you could test uh, test for voltage and continuity and whatnot in circuit or inject in circuit if you wanted to. And the flat one, the flat one is just a different style back probe pin for different style uh, plugs. I think like JIS plugs, I think, usually have a, a flat square back to them. You can kind of slip that in there and uh, make that work. Now we're getting into more recent time accessories that I've purchased. Uh, this right here is a five volt regulator basically and you take your ground lead stick it on here and it's got little might be hard to tell but it's got little um, lips on here so when you put the alligator clip on it doesn't come flopping off which is a little nice little thing they did there and then you just take your probe here plug it in and if you need to put five volts into the circuit say you're testing um, uh, a sensor or something something of that nature you just put that guy on there and then you got five volts at the end of the tip there it's also good for um, bench testing sensors if you have a sensor that runs on five volts you can stick this in the bench and give it five volts of course you got to ground the other end of it and then you can test it in uh, in real time now getting into which is probably my next favorite accessory for this here tool would be the amp probe how awesome is that so situation you know you got something that's blowing a fuse and you want to see how many amps the circuits actually pulling this will let you know that this thing does take a little button cell battery that you got to put in the back basically hit the lower button and then that gives you a little readout min amps max amps and then just whatever it's reading at the time now we'll say this for a real world type scenario clip this guy on ground here right here and then we can turn the light on that ain't gonna work there we go turn the light on and then inject power into it comes on and we are reading 3.14 amps I think it might be the high beam. It's still low beam, I believe. And 4.3 amps. Now that's the high beam. So, um, yeah. I mean, if you know, you know why that's pretty cool. So, this is my 8th grade science fair project that I threw together <laughs> for you guys to do a couple quick diagnostic steps that I would go through using this particular tool. Um what we basically have here is down here we got ourselves a fuse hooked up to a switch we got a relay hooked up to a headlight and as you can see we are currently not working so what we're going to do is what i normally do is i like to start at either ends when i'm doing electrical diagnostics kind of just load and power if i got load i get power you know what i mean so what we're going to do is come over here and we'll turn the switch on that's our ground, so we know we got ground to the to the headlight there. 
and it's reading ground because you have resistance going through the coil. So it's got continuity to ground, but you don't actually have ground there. And the same thing goes for the other beam. So what we'll do is come over here. I turn that off because it does get annoying, but yeah. So we'll come over here, inject power. So now we know that the headlight works and the problem is coming back that way. So we'll come back here to the actual fuse. I'll turn the beeper on because I don't know if I can get it all on camera at the same time. So we'll come over here to the fuse. That's power into the fuse. And we don't have any power going out of it. So we'll pull the fuse. And lo and behold, the, the fuse looks like it's blown. We want to confirm that the actual fuse is blown. Come over here with the old continuity test with the external ground. Touch it. We'll turn the peeper back on. And we got no continuity. So let's go get ourselves a new fuse. Just to check to make sure. And now we got continuity through our fuse, so now we know we got a good fuse. So let's put that into the circuit. All right, now so we replaced the fuse, and we still got no lights. So turn the switch on there. Check the power to the switch. Good. Check the power coming out of the switch. Good. Check the power to the relay. Now the relay. Let me bring this over here. Okay, so we got just a regular old 12 volt relay. They've been using these style relays for a hundred years. Not a hundred, but you get the picture. In automotive, heavy equipment, just about everywhere. Um, these are the actual pinout of the relay as they are pictured down here. See, so we could find which terminal goes to which. Uh, you got your input powers power over here number 30 which is switched over here by 87a and 87 87a would be your normally closed 87 would be your normally open and then 86 it doesn't matter power or ground it's just a coil uh, that goes through and once that gets powered it's basically a magnetic switch it pulls this down and gives you power to your 87. And one quick correction before we move on Sometimes they put a diode between these two, and in that case, the polarity would matter. Moving on. Um, so yeah, we got our 12 volts coming out of the switch right there. 12 volts going to the relay, which would be number 85, because we are uh, energizing the, the coil, the magnetic coil. And checking the back end of it. We got power on... 86 because it's not doing anything at this point in time all right we know we're missing the ground here so let's turn our switch off come over here off camera where you can't see uh, repair our ground and give it another go and there we go everything's fixed nice and easy and now for our final example using the the amp probe here if you wanted to see what this uh, entire circuit was uh, taking as far as as far as amp draw goes you can come over here plug it into the power source you still have the fuse here to protect the uh, the circuit and then just uh, inject your 12 volts into it and you're getting your 3.26 volts which is the entirety of the circuit yeah there we go that is the power probe three uh like i said this thing is great it's it's good for quick and dirty diagnostics without having to get out jumper leads and your meter and all kinds of stuff it's in your hand it it, it works good uh there are a few probably more than a few knockoffs of this thing uh me personally when it comes to diagnostic tools i like to be able to trust them and i trust this thing it's been in my toolbox for years it hasn't failed me yet and i don't see why i would have any problems with this in the future they, they do have a power probe 4 which i believe uh, somewhat recently has come out and for the most part it's got just a better 
a better display on it, an LCD display, <clears throat> backlit so you could see it a little bit better. But it's essentially this thing, just an updated version of it. Um, this particular one, I will link the uh, cheaper um, kit form of it. It'll be like a starter kit where you just get the probe and the leads. Um, the kit that I have is a little bit pricier, but if you you know you want the bigger one, they go up to like a professional one where you get this a meter and all kinds of test leads and everything. You could get into that if you want, but like I said, I'm going to click the cheaper one. Uh, if you want to get the more expensive ones, you can just go to other options or Power Probe Store on Amazon, and you can look through the different options. But uh, I'll link that. I'll link the other um, accessories that I had with this, and um, yeah, you could uh, you could check those out. Uh, one one thing I, I can say is that I know there's probably a lot of people say I don't like electronics, and um, I don't like to mess with them. And the reason you don't like to mess with them is because you're not good at it. And uh, the more you practice, the better you get with them. And the difference between a good mechanic and a great mechanic is somebody who could pick up some electronic diagnostic tools or hydraulic diagnostic tools and uh, figure out what's wrong with the invisible boogeyman that's uh, hiding inside a machine or a piece of equipment. So, um, yeah, I think that's about it for this video. Um, as always, I want to thank you for watching. Questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the old comment section there. And, um, yeah, I'll catch you later. There you go.